chapter being created. Solarbus at MSN.com is my website. I'll send you, or not my website, my email. I'll send you your information about what's going on. The most exciting time is now. This is actually what's happened on the federal level. Obama said to the DEA, which is the only agency in your government that doesn't want marijuana, all other agencies in your federal government are okay with marijuana. They'll give you marijuana tax stamps, the medical people grow their own, I mean the whole thing. So Obama's told them to, if a state passes a law and, and you're not violating both state and federal, then DEA cannot go in and bother them. Woo! Yeah. A yeah. Yeah. So we can now go to our state, we can go to the, the North Dakota governor who's been trying to legalize it for the last few years with the DEA, they were going to have to sue him, he said, um, can now go, well, we can grow industrialized hemp. Yeah. This hemp seed butter right here, if you get shelled hemp seed from Canada, it's $10 a pound. A bushel is 17 pounds, which means a bushel of hemp seed is $170 a bushel. Right now, corn is at $4 a bushel. Wheat is at $3.5 a bushel. If you tell a farmer they can make $170 a bushel versus four, I have a feeling it'll help them out a lot. So that's just hemp. It's two omega threes, two omega sixes, one omega nine. It's super brain food, and that's very important. The hemp movement you guys are carrying on has been going on since the 70s. The first hemp movement in Omaha was at uh, Memorial Park in 75. Tom Foster, the owner of McFoster's Natural Kind, is the organizer of that. Now he's doing the Natural Kind Cafe and being Ruby and everything. That's really neat. This hemp shirt is the first hemp shirt we imported in 1990 to Omaha. This is the last one. You can't have it. It's mine. Uh, and it's hemp and the steel buttons, and it was from China, and it was really groovy back then. And then we just kind of like did nothing because nothing really happened. Bill Clinton didn't help us. George Bush went the other way. So yeah, that's exactly right. So that now with these new, with the new law that Obama said told the DA not to bother anybody, this is the time to strike. I mean, don't no just sit around. Yeah. Email every senator at the state legislature, every city councilman, every mayor, everybody. <laughs> What's really beautiful about where we live is these government structures are actually set up to listen to you. You can walk into the mayor's office and knock on his door and say, I would like to speak to him. Can I sign up? And they will sign you up for a moment with the mayor. Or with anybody you want to talk to, because they serve us. I know it doesn't look like it, but it's true. And and if you show up, 60% of the people don't vote. So, of course, you get the guy you don't vote for, right? So if everybody starts showing up, then next thing you know, the whole thing gets transformed. And it's fantastic. And it's, it's really neat. There's so many things happening. I, I just want to burst my seams right now. And that's the reason I'm here this year, is because everything is really groovy and you got to do it. So a normal chapter is being started. You can join that. I'm not sure what it's going to do or where it's going to go, but you join it, we'll find out because you will be participating and you'll be the ones deciding. There's never been a normal chapter in Nebraska. Normal has come here and done things, but it was always the outside group, but always had mixed results. So anyway, what else do I know? Fiber, fuel, and food is what we want to do. And then if you want to give the conservatives their arguments, it's a gateway drug accept that and say, okay, you're right. So that is the very reason we need to separate marijuana from cocaine, heroin, and the other drugs. Exactly. We, exactly. You don't consider alcohol a gateway because you go into a bar. There's no heroin, cocaine, and stuff at the bar. You know, yeah. their cigarettes aren't a gateway because the drugstore doesn't sell you fucking heroin, cocaine. You associate with different people. It's about who you associate with. 
that's very, very important. So we need to explain to them, we're trying to save your children, because we know they're probably going to try some marijuana, and they're probably going to go to guy, some guy's house who has cocaine. And then they'll do both, and then you'll be right. So if we move it over here and make it legal, he's not running into those guys anymore. He's running into your parents. He's running into people hanging out, enjoying their lives. He's sitting at the cafe, you know? I mean, that, that's the kind of life you have. You know? So let's give them their argument and then tell them that's the reason we need to separate them. And that's kind of an interesting way of doing things because now you're agreeing with them, so now you're his friend, and then you show how his argument is the reason we need to legalize it. They love that stuff. What? They love that we Yeah, oh, sure. <laughs> no, it's great. Okay. But no, ask questions. I'm a well, and I don't know I could pick shit out all day. I mean, oh my. You guys know any history about it? Like, you know, the reason it was outlawed in 32 is because of paper trees. You know, pulp. Hearst was making a newspaper. He had trees. He needed to get it outlawed. I mean, your constitution in the States is made of it. Uh, that they keep it a big bolt. They're just keeping a big piece of hemp paper in there. You know, uh, it was mandatory hemp laws in the 1700s. You had to grow hemp. It was mandatory. And then, and then you had to grow it during World War II. They gave everybody marijuana tax stamps for World War II. So all we have to do is get back to the industrial. Now these folks are a lot of medical people. Now I'm not, I don't need it for medical purposes, even though it does reduce stress. And life can be stressful, and I do get stressed, so I, you know, could use it for my stress relief. So I mean, that's, that's really exciting too. But there's a whole different thing. Industrial hemp is tall plants, really close together, no THC. And then medical marijuana, Canada spent two million bucks on developing ways of dispensing it. So I don't go and say I want to smoke it. I want to eat a cookie with the right amount. So now a doctor can prescribe me cookies, can prescribe me brownies that have the exact amount of THC that he wants to prescribe for my ailments. Now we give the medical society a way of being able to dispense it in a way that they know isn't harmful because smoking, they'll never tell you to smoke a thing ever. They can't. They're doctors. I mean, smoke in your lungs, hold your silicas down, blah, blah, blah. So the whole point is they can never advocate smoking. But they can advocate eating a cookie or a brownie or a piece of bread that has hemp butter in it, high in THC. So there is a fantastic institution in Canada. You should see it. It was on 60 Minutes the other week. And they had all this super blood. It was unbelievable because it's THC they want. So they're growing it all indoors to make it super THC rich. Anyway, I'm trying to tell me.